Hello everybody and welcome back to the MakerPipe Masterclass, which is a series that we're doing where we're walking you through an entire DIY project made with EMT electrical conduit and MakerPipe connectors. So far in the series we've talked about everything from where you find conduit, how to cut it, how to assemble connectors. We've even talked about planning and designing a project and making a cut list. And as you can see here, I've got my mini model and my sketch and my cut list here for a project that we designed in the previous episode, which was uh, this really cool workbench that I'm excited to build. And that's actually what we're gonna be starting today. We're gonna be making the main steel framework in this episode, which I'm really excited uh, for you guys to see how e easy it is to build your project with conduit and connectors. So first of all, we've got to unbox our shipment. So I ordered my connectors in the last episode. That's what I've got here. And I'm excited because I can highlight a few things. So you open this up and you've got everything inside that you ordered. And I've got some accessories here. These are the hanger straps that you might remember me mentioning as well as some of the other accessories. We'll talk about these in the next episode. Today we're just focused on uh, actually building with the connectors. But inside your box, you're gonna find all your accessories. Uh, but here we've got our maker pipe connectors and the included hardware that you need for making connections. Uh, and you'll notice here with the parts, that we flat pack and seal them together. And this just allows, um, allows us to save some room inside the box and just saves you money with shipping. Uh, and something that you wanna be mindful of whenever you're unboxing your parts is uh, that we will ship and, or sorry, seal parts together that are the same piece. And that really comes into play with uh, pieces like this inside 90 here, which goes with the outside 90. And uh, I don't have any other parts in my build that utilize these, so uh, it's not too confusing now, but just you wanna be mindful of connectors like the 180 or the four-way or the five-way, because they use similar pieces and we'll pack and seal them together. Uh, so you might think you're missing something, but just check out the website and the photos and the videos, and you'll see which pieces that you need uh, to use. And then you can you know, start putting to, uh, together connectors. And like I mentioned in the last episode, you might find it useful to go ahead and open your parts and you know, of course, check your inventory, make sure you got everything. And then also, you know, start loosely assembling connectors. So sometimes you want to be mindful of doing that uh, and kind of think about it from your design. Something I like to do is to take my mini model and, you know, kind of look at it or even your sketch and just think about how you're going to be putting together the main frame. So really the way I plan to do it is just to separate the front and the back half here, as you can see, and kind of separate this this front section and then build it flat on the ground, which is a tip that I mentioned doing. And then kind of adding in all of these other things as I'm building, but just starting with these two halves separated and building them. But if you separate your mini model or look at your sketch and think about your build and how it's gonna to go, to, go together, you can then look and see if it makes sense to go ahead and loosely assemble some parts. So like the 90 degree connectors that I'm gonna be using in the frame and, and these couple of different places on these verticals, I'm gonna go ahead and loosely assemble those because it makes sense. And uh, that's something that you can do when you're working on your workbench and it makes it really easy to do. And now I'm finishing up the last one. And as I was mentioning, you know, you just look at your sketch or your mini model and you can see which ones to, to go ahead and do this for. Uh, so now we've got our 90 degree connectors assembled. We've got our hardware. I've got my tools for building. And uh, something that you can do if you've already gone ahead and picked up your EMT conduit before now is to go ahead and cut your EMT conduit and have that ready to go. That's why making a cut list ahead of time is really helpful. And behind me, I've already gone ahead and cut quite a few out. And that means I'm ready to build, which is what I'm gonna start doing. And I mentioned in the previous episode or one of the previous episodes that it's really helpful to build on a flat surface, which usually ends up being the ground, which is what I'm gonna do. And uh, you know, kind of go through and I'll just mention more highlights and things as we're going through. All right, so I've got all my conduit here, as you can see. I actually am gonna show you guys something on the table really quick. Uh, that I think will be uh, easier to show you up here. Um, but you might mention one of the, or you might remember in one of the previous episodes, I mentioned uh, that whenever you're putting, you know, cross supports like this, you of course want them to be even. You don't want one side to be all wonky like that. And so I mentioned a trick uh, to make sure that you get those even. That's what I'm gonna show you uh, up here on the desk. But essentially I'm gonna go ahead and put the eight 90 degree connectors from my frame in place. Uh, I got the two shorter front verticals here, and then I've got the two back verticals that I'll bring up here in a second. But for these two top 90s, I'm gonna go ahead and just put those flush with the top. And one of the things I mentioned in a previous episode is just to, to kind of loosely assemble things. So I'm switching to my hex wrench here. And you can see that I can just go a couple of turns and that does a good job of holding the connector in place. You can see it's not moving around on there, 
but it's still leaving enough of an opening that I can add the other pieces of conduit in here really easily when the time comes in a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with that 90. And I'm gonna do this other 90 up here. And sometimes you'll notice that, you know, when I tighten the other side, it kind of uh, squeezed this one and then made, made it where this one won't accept another piece. So you just kind of have to loosen it a little bit just like that. But as you can see, it stays in place. And so I can just put in my other pieces of conduit, which will make that easy. But now, lower down the frame, I don't want this cross support to sit flush with the ground. I wanna raise it up a little bit just so I don't trip over it and just so it looks a little nicer. So I'm gonna raise this up. I didn't really plan ahead for this whenever I was doing the uh, mini model in the design. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do this, let's see, maybe, let's say three inches off the ground. Actually, let's do four inches off the ground, as you can see there. So something that I like to recommend uh, that I mentioned in a previous episode is when you're adding this to do your mark at four inches, of course, so you know where the connector is gonna go. But something that you wanna be mindful of is if I put the connector there, it's gonna add about an inch, maybe over an inch to the, uh, the, the, the link there. And so if I put this one on this side of the line and then put the other one on this side of the line, then that is going to be crooked and you know, they're gonna be two different dimensions. So something I like to recommend is just to put an extra little mark on here where you're going to have the connector facing. So that lets me know that I'm gonna put the connector on this side of the line and I can do that with all of the, the marks that I make. That way, whenever I put my connectors in place, I know that they're all gonna be lined up in the same plane and not be crooked. So then, I can go ahead and put these in place here. And this is something that is really helpful whenever you're building on a flat surface is you want these to be in the same orientation of the other ones because my cross supports are gonna be coming out of the 90s and going from one side of the vertical to the other, and so you want these to be in the same plane. So building flat on the ground makes that really easy too. And then just loosely tighten that in place there. Just enough to where it stays in place. And still allows me to put the other pieces of conduit in, but it's not sliding all over the place and it's on the correct side of the line. So super easy, did that for the first two verticals in the front. So now I'm just gonna do the same thing to these back verticals. So we've got all the verticals prepped for the 90s and we just gotta lay this flat on the ground can't really do that up here, so I'm gonna lay it down. Then I'm just gonna start with my two front verticals. Just gonna slide these in, just like that. Tighten these just enough to kind of hold this piece in. Easy enough. So I've got the front section of the workbench finished. It's gonna be this right here. So I just need to do the back two now. Just gonna tighten that just enough, as we've been doing, just to hold that there and then do our last one. So now we've got the back two verticals of the frame ready to go. And I'll put this one on the ground. I think that makes the most sense. And then I'm just going to take, I've got four of these 20 inch pieces that are just going to connect the back section and the front section. So nice and easy. Just gonna drop those in place just like that. And then I'll go around and actually secure them in place. Just tighten these enough to hold them just like that. And you'll see as you tighten the connector, it just clamps around the pieces of conduit. Don't have to do any welding. Nice and easy to make connections. And you just tighten it just like that with the five millimeter hex wrench. So then all we have to do is take our front section and just lay this on top. So I'm just gonna do the same thing I just did, which is just tighten these last couple of connections here. All right, and just like that, that is the assembly of our main frame. We still got a couple things to do, of course, but it was really easy to put together. I'm confident that it's all square because we built it on a flat surface and we measured. So the bottom rung is even, which is really nice because the connectors are uh, what we call through pipe connections in the middle of the 90 here. Uh, you know, you could adjust this later. You can, you know, just loosen this, slide it up and down. But by just going ahead and measuring ahead of time, we've got all of these in the correct position and it's even all the way across, which can be kind of a tricky thing to line up whenever you're working on projects. But just thinking ahead a little bit and doing that as you're building uh, makes it really easy to get that lined up. And we've got our main frame put together here. So all I have to do now is just, I want to add some stability to this. You can see pretty strong overall. You know, I'm confident that I could leave it like this 
But just in case I put some heavier things like a vise on top of this workbench, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and add some more, uh, you know, support just to make sure it's braced appropriately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a support to the front and back. This needs to go the center of this span. The total span is 46 inches. So that's going to be 23 is going to be the center, but the connector is going to take up an inch in total width. So I'm going to put up, uh, put a mark here on 22 and a half. Go ahead and do our little extra mark there that we've been talking about. Do 23 and a half. So now I know that's exactly where my T connector goes on the front there. Now I'm just going to do the same thing in the back. So now I'm confident I can put my T's in place and that'll be even on there. And then you can see it's lined up good with the, the back here. So just going to put this on, hook my T's together, do the same thing just like that. So now we've got some extra stability to the frame. We've got this front to back support, which is going to help a lot. But then there's a brace that you know you, you heard me talk about in the planning episode that I love to do in projects like this, which is essentially just adding a piece of conduit down to the sides on both sides. And it just adds a lot of support, a lot of side to side support to the frame. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's kind of hard to figure out those dimensions. So what I'm gonna do is put the T's in place, but then I can actually put my tape measure up here, right up against where the conduit is gonna be. It's gonna sit inside the connector right about this spot. Then I can go all the way down here to the T connector and do the same thing down here, get it in position. And I can see that this is going to be right at about 35 inches, I think is safe to do. And that makes it really easy to figure that out. I didn't have to do any math or anything when doing the cut list ahead of time. I can just go ahead and cut those two and add those in place, which is what I'm going to do. And just like that, we've got the mainframe put together, which is really exciting. I hope you guys saw how easy it was to put together projects. And uh, I thought about, you know, combining this with the accessory episode, but I think, you know, this is really standard for a lot of projects where you're going to put together the mainframe and you're going to kind of kit it out later on. You're going to build your greenhouse, but then, you know, later on you're going to add your greenhouse plastic. Uh, you know, a lot of projects just consist of making the main steel frame with conduit and connectors and then adding all those accessories. So we're going to stop there with this episode. Uh, you know, you see I've got two longer verticals still in the place here in the back. And I mentioned in the previous episode that I wanted to leave those longer because I'm going to add some pegboard for hanging up tools and things. And this will make it really easy to customize where those are going to be. Uh, just kind of have them extra length there that I'll cut off later. But we've got our brace here. You can see this thing is a lot stronger lot more lateral stability. I feel really confident, you know, putting heavier things up here like a vise, and it's gonna hold it just fine. So, like I said, hopefully you guys found uh, and saw how easy it was to build with the MT Conduit and Maker Pipe, and this gives you some confidence for your own project. Like I said, no matter what your skill level is, I'm confident that you can put together a build like this and be proud of it. So, make sure you're subscribed for the upcoming episodes. We're almost finished with this series, and uh, excited to finish this frame up and, uh, you know, show you guys some things, some cool accessories and different hacks that we're gonna do in the upcoming episodes. So, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.